A wise man once told me, follow the liquidity, not the drama. I'm just kidding, I made that up. I, I, I could say I'm wise. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm wise, but I do know that from history, when I followed liquidity, I made huge amounts of money. And I'll tell you what, the liquidity is moving to Arbitrium. And today we're gonna talk about a hidden gem with a smaller market cap that can have a potential to blast off if the market jumps with it, which I do think it is. Watch my last video, we talked about that. Keep watching. What's going on everybody? Alex back with another video and I'm gonna get real down and dirty. I'm gonna get down and dirty. We need some altcoins, all right? Well, I need some altcoins. I don't know about you. If you've been in this market for a while, we know one thing and that altcoins have the power of pumping. I'm talking about literal moon bags, okay? They, they call it mooning for a reason because when an altcoin pumps, when you pick the right one, it goes crazy. Hundreds of percentages, thousands of percentages. And if you watch my last video, which I'm gonna pop up here, I talked about how it's gonna potentially be a short-term pump and then we're gonna get a long-term dump, which by the way, I will talk about how to make money off the market going down as well so you're not left holding the bag and following the dollar cost average narrative. If you appreciate this content, do us both a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the post notification bell. There's a little bell. If you click that bell icon, you'll get notified from all of these time sensitive videos. But really quickly, let me show you one more thing. I got a group, it's free of charge, okay? This, this group is amazing. They have a leaderboard. If you go to the leaderboard here, you can see who's putting in work and you get incentives for moving up rank. If you move up rank, you get incentives. It's really amazing how many people are putting in work in this group. I'm also in there as well, answering questions a minority of the time. The majority of my time goes to the actual inner circle, which we also have a signals group and an inner circle where you can get like everything, man. I spend 90% of my group management time in the inner circle. This comes with real mentorship. I'm talking about tests that you have to take to move up levels, as well as I track your interaction in the group. This is not like a regular Discord. It's real guidance and coaching, real guidance and coaching, which leads to real results. Look, it's not hands off, just do signals. If you want that, there's a signals group, go for it. But if you want real mentorship, where I grab you by the hand and I walk you across the bear market finish line, I walk you into the cryptocurrency market, I really show you the way, that's what Inner Circle is. So you can apply there and it's only month to month, so you can cancel it whenever you want, no pressure, that's on you. That will be at coinpix.io. And then obviously, like I say in every video, we have a risk management calculator, which basically how I do my risk management with these altcoins. If you're looking at these altcoins, you're making degenerate trades and you're getting wrecked, that's on you. I show you risk management, which by the way, you can be wrong a lot with risk management and still make money. So let's jump into Arbitrium on-chain metrics. So I was going through Nansen, that link will be in the description below as well. It's an on-chain analytics platform where you could essentially look into a blockchain and dissect the transactions. And I noticed a couple of things. The first thing is the multi-chain activity. The address retention is extremely high, 59%. Of the people that go on Arbitrium, the retention is high, meaning people are staying there. And as you can see on the three month, it's pretty high as well. Phantom has some good retention, but Phantom has been out for way longer and they have similar retention. This is really important. Look at Avalanche, look at BNB. People use it and they leave. Retention is important, why? Because the liquidity has to stay on the chain, okay? If we look at another metric, you can see that when it comes to active addresses change, people are still jumping on Arbitrium, it's number two. Ronin is another chain we'll talk about in future videos. Make sure you subscribe. But Arbitrium is getting consistent new addresses. This is also another important fact because that's more liquidity, more people using the actual protocol. Now, if we look at L2 Heartbeat, you can see the total value locked, which is the sum of all funds locked on Ethereum converted to USD. You can see that Arbitrium 1 has the highest total value locked in all of the layer 2s. So when it comes to layer twos, if you don't know how this works, we have layer ones, which is like the operating system, which is like the foundational infrastructure, which is basically Ethereum. But the fees right now are $12, right? So for rich people that, you know, they can trade all day, $12 in, $12 out. Doesn't really matter if you're trading with $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 per trade. But if you're trading with a couple hundred, 
the Arbitrium fees are like 12 cents, 10 cents. So for the average day person, they're gonna wanna be able to find some altcoins on a layer two. So if we look at the biggest layer twos, well, when it comes to TVL, they are unmatched. They are unmatched. So they're they're basically unmatched when it comes to TVL. They, they retain people when they actually come on their chain, they actually retain uh, addresses and there's more addresses coming on there. That's a good sign for liquidity being moved into this layer two and that's a good sign for lower market cap altcoins. So I want to set you up so you understand that if I purchase this, which by the way, I, I make all of my purchases in my two groups now. I don't do it publicly anymore for obvious reasons. But if I purchase this coin, okay, it's because I'm setting myself up. To, I want to be in the liquidity. I want to be where all the money's at, right? If, you, if you're on a chain with no TVL, like I see it even today's day and age, people are always like, well, there's... This one chain that's called Loop Ring, and it's amazing, but it has $125 million, which is absolutely nothing. Now, if you compare this, for example, uh, to an Ethereum, right? Let's look at the, the Ethereum TVL ranking. Look at that, 29.99 billion compared to 100 and something million. So 100 million is very small liquidity in the grand scheme of things, and you'll get that gauge better and better as you move in cryptocurrency and you get better and better. So if we look at on-chain data, you can see that whales are accumulating ARB, which is Arbitrium token. They're doing this because there's a whole governance controversy. They're making uh, votes on proposals. They're essentially making a decentralized autonomous organization on Arbitrium, and they're trying to see how they're gonna pay out the decentralized on autonomous organization and what they're gonna pay for and things of that nature. So you see whales accumulating Arbitrium token, and this is a good sign. This is a lot of transactions. This is showing that they're actually trying to make something for real on Arbitrium. And it's just like, this is good. Now, before we move into the video, I just want to say one thing to warn you. There's all types of fake airdrops. The airdrops are already over. So if you type in Arbitrium on Twitter, this is where the crypto scams come into play. Be careful with your money. Please understand how to secure your money. And as you can see here, there's a lot of scams that are promoting an airdrop. There is no more airdrop. So I just want to let you guys know that. Don't get scammed. Okay. But yes, on-chain data really shows uh, this is a big, not huge whale, 4.6 million, but he's a recognizable guy. He's buying our Arbitrium token uh, 22 hours ago. He's buying a whole bunch of it. It's because they want to participate in the governance. They want to control, you know, where the governance goes. So if you look at the Discord, you can see that they're doing a couple of things, right? The foundation will not move any of the 700 million tokens in the administrative budget wallet until an acceptable budget and smart contract lockup schedule has been approved for the DAO. They're trying to come up with an actual approvals before they start withdrawing the money. So as you can see here, they have different proposals. AIP 1-1 processes important restrictions on the foundation's spending, including a smart contract enforcement lockup schedule that releases linearly over four years further adjusted by the DAO. It also proposes well-defined budgetary principles and categories and mandated transparency reports. And as you can see, AIP 1.2 proposes to amend the core governing documents of the DAO, lowering the proposal threshold from 5 million to 1 million tokens to make the governance more acceptable. It also adjusts the foundation's bylaws to remove references to AIP 1. Basically what happened is they made a whole bunch of moves. The community was mad about it. Uh, there was a slight uproar and they actually amended it and they made changes. So now they're trying to get this confirmed and there's just all types of activity on our beach room, all types of liquidity. People are actually involved. Look, it's hard to find things in the bear market, but when I see something like this where it's really clear, my goal is to find a gem. I wanna find a gem. Now here's the actual proposals. You can look it up for yourself. My goal is not jump into this too much, but as you can see here from the motivation on March 16th, they wanna control the upgradability and technical future of the chains. They want control over the Dow treasury. Obviously these are very aggressive mandates control over the net fee revenue. They were trying to control it and uproar started, so they changed it. They made amendments and you can go look this up for yourself. My goal is not to dive into all the technical details. That is what your research is for. This is so you can piggyback off my research, okay? Now let's take a quick look at the foundation governance directors. So you can see the type of credibility that's behind our beach room. We have Campbell Law, which is the founder of Silverside and the co-founder of Providence, and he has over 30 years of experience in the financial services industry in the Cayman Islands. He has considerable experience working within the offshore world, including 11 years as a VP at Goldman Sachs, and now focuses on corporate governance for the Cayman Island entities. 
big credibility. We have Edward, who is a director of Mayfire and a co-founder of Autonomous and is focused on providing directorship and DAO services to Web3 funds, DAOs, foundations, opcos, and he's recently served as an audit director. He has all types of experience. I'm not going to dive into it, but we also have someone that worked at Citigroup, okay? Annie worked at Citigroup, uh, BlackRock as an investor. Uh, so this is crazy. The credibility behind this governance is big, okay? So what I'm saying here, if all the money is moving into our Beatrium, which is a layer two with cheap transaction fees, there's a lot of credibility, a lot of money, right? They're creating this DAO, uh, you know, this decentralized autonomous organization. What I want to do is I want to look for coins that are gems, that have good utility, good marketability, um, you know, preferably DeFi right now specifically because, you know, the, the meme coins and all of that, they're doing well. And, and you know, there, there's a time and place for that. But I want things with solid foundations, right? And I found something. It's called Pendle. So Pendle, okay, has a relatively low market cap, 101 million. Okay, it's been recently on a big rise. So I want you guys to know that this is slightly a risk because I would say that it's already rose a lot of percentages, but I think that it's going to rise more. And if you look at the price structure, it recently broke all time high. So it's in an area where it can continue to rise. There is no, like, we don't know how high it's gonna go. So it could have a small pullback, but we don't, it could go, it can go really high guys. So if you look at what Pendle does, it's basically, they give users the range to their yield. Pendle is a permissionless DeFi yield trading protocol currently built on Ethereum blockchain. Now it's on our Btrim where users can execute various yield management strategies essentially it's a DeFi platform just to make it simple for you but they have their own unique sales proposition which i'm going to try to explain to you for beginners it's gonna be a little bit crazy but basically they obviously have something normal that a lot of people have which is a yield bearing token so essentially when you put it in a cryptocurrency into a smart contract platform you get something called yield i'm sure you've seen it on coinbase or something it's just it's like a annual percentage yield right apy so Let's say you get 5% a year, right? What they allow you to do is actually pull out the yield before your actual period is up. So let's say you lock it up for a year. You can pull out your yield before the year is up. So they have two ways of doing it. So there's a couple of, of phrases you should know, all right? And, and the main ones to me is uh, PT and YT. But let's talk about all three of them. Standardized yield. SY is a token standard written by the Pendle team that wraps any yield bearing token and provides a standardized interface for interacting with any yield bearing tokens yield generating mechanism. SY is purely a technical component, so you don't have to worry about that, but these two are really important. PT, principal token. PT entitles you to the principal of the underlying yield bearing token. So when you put in your money, okay, it guarantees that you could actually have that principle. It's redeemable after maturity. So let's say you lock it up for a year, it's redeemable after the year. If you own 100 PT AUSD with one year maturity, you will be able to redeem 100 AUSD after one year. That's important because there's ways you can actually arbitrage this and make money off of it. That's not my goal. My goal for me, I'm just gonna buy the actual Pendle token, which we'll talk about further. They have staking mechanisms. They have all types of mechanisms. I'm just giving you the background and why people are using it to, to generate yield. There's a lot of liquidity using this to generate yield. They also have the second one, which is YT yield token. YT entitles you to acquire the yield of the underlying yield bearing token in real time. So meaning while the yield is being generated, you could actually take profit in three months. So if you have a year of, of generating APY, right? You could take the profit after three months if you wanted to. And the yield accrued can be manually claimed at any time. If you own 100 YT AUSDC and AUSDC has an average yield of 5% throughout the year, you will have accrued 5 AUSDC at the end of the year. So it's it's basic, but it gives you more functionality. It's, it's, it's essentially how APY works, but it gives you a lot more functionality. Also, this is actually very similar to what you would see in traditional finance. One thing I want to point out with this use case is this brings TradeFi interest derivative market, which is worth over 400 trillion in value into DeFi, making it accessible to all. So PT is equivalent to zero coupon bonds, while YT is equivalent of coupon payments. So this market is monumental. This is a $400 trillion market. This is OTC interest rate derivative. So essentially this is a traditional finance product brought to the decentralized world 
which obviously has all types of benefits, meaning anyone can use it for small fees, things of that nature. It's just more traditional finance tools uh, in the DeFi world. Now, here's where it gets a little bit interesting. We'll go over the interface and all of that, I promise. But right here, I want to point this out. The team tokens are vested up to April 2023. What does that mean? When a new protocol is launched, they give out tokens to different people. For example, the team got 5.7. There's an ecosystem fund, there's incentives, and they're circulating. Cir circulating is what they put for liquidity. Incentives are what they pay out on the platform as yield. And then uh, ecosystem is for, you know, to, to build out the entire ecosystem, right? And then the team vested is what the team gets. You can see right here, team tokens vested up to April 2023. Meaning beyond this, any increase to the circulating supply will be contributed by incentives and ecosystem building. So the team won't dump on you is what I'm saying. The this is crazy because a lot of tokens they have that's that's what causes downward price action. The team's not dump, dumping on you. They're using the money to build out the ecosystem. So I thought that was important. And obviously we're in April right now, and this is a lower market cap coin. So these things are definitely important. Now, a couple of other things if we look at on-chain metrics, the token price and the volume has been skyrocketing. There's people with a lot of credibility, people that have made money before that I have tracked that show that they're actually accumulating pendo. Now, if we look at the weekly trades per DEX, you can see it's on an uprise a lot. A lot of people are acquiring Pendle, trading Pendle, doing things with this, this actual project. If you look a little bit deeper, you can see we have a bear market magic accumulator. So this is a wallet tagged as bear market magic accumulator, which if you look at the percentage increase of Arbitrum tokens, magic is one of the best uh, producers. They've done pretty well. And he actually took a lot. So if you look at his wallet, he actually pretty much went all in on Pendle. So this guy is a bear market magic accumulator. He was accumulating magic, which is a very, very, very strong fundamental coin that is appreciated by a large percentage in the Arbitrum ecosystem. And he started accumulating, okay, Pendle a lot, like two days ago. And then if you look a little bit deeper, the smart money tab on Nansen shows that a lot of smart money is accumulating pen Pendle. And smart money basically just means people with credibility on chain that have shown they either make money or or have done something that shows that they have a high knowledge of crypto, smart money, right? Um, they are accumulating 461,000 in the past 24 hours. So I personally believe that's a good indicator, not perfect because they can manipulate this. Be careful. If you don't know what you're doing, do not go crazy with this type of stuff because you'll get wrecked, okay? They, they can manipulate these charts too, by the way. They know how to manipulate them, but I've been watching it for a while. I've seen a lot of liquidity yesterday. I see a lot of liquidity today. I personally believe people are FOMOing in uh, with the actual trend that's happening, which I talked about in my last video. I think we're going to have a short term pump. And I think that this might be a really good coin to just dollar cross average with a, to just buy with a very small amount. Now, before I say that, again, I want to say it one more time, risk management is important. So when I mean small amount, I really mean small amount. So basically the way I'm doing it is with 35,000 as my principal balance, this is my trading account. I'm entering with like these numbers, 275, 550, small numbers. And that's what I typically do with my trading strategy, with my risk management. Now, if you put 100% of your money, like I can't help you, bro. Like if you're trading like that, I'm sorry, I just can't help you. Now, if we look at the community dashboard, you could see that people have been providing liquidity to the USDT pool, the STETH pool, USD, like there's, it's increasing is what I'm saying. You see the, the upward growth trajectory. This is a good sign. This is a really good sign. Also, the PTUSDT pool is doing 56.5% APY on a stable coin, single-sided liquidity. If you know anything about DeFi, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. And you might be asking the question, is there smart contract risk? Look, this team, after doing my research, they've made a couple of other projects. I've never seen them exit scam. And I've also seen that they have audits. Now, look, I could do a super deep dive if you guys want. This is kind of a surface level. Leave a comment below if you guys want me to dive a little bit deeper. But their team is public. You can see their faces. So that's a good sign of credibility. It's a good sign of credibility. Now, again, I haven't done enough research on this team to go like 100% in, all in. But I believe I've done enough research to put a small amount in and I haven't pulled the trigger yet. I don't know when I'm going to pull the trigger. I think we're going to wait for the market to come down. Personally, I'm going to wait for the market to come down a little bit for the next like week or so. I'm just setting you guys up for success. And then, you know, at a certain price level, I will probably accumulate, but I will also be doing more research just to give you a heads up. And if I find any red flags, I will not buy this token. But so far, 
it's checking off a lot of boxes for me. Okay. So the, the, you know, it's just the incentives are there. Um, you know, their protocol is pretty interesting. What are the biggest facts for me? Okay. What are, what are the biggest things that caught my eye? All right. Was this, they have a simple interface. Look at the way they sell it. This is where the marketing comes into play. They're selling it basically buy assets at a discount. So meaning you could buy USDT for a 4.26 discount. That's the first thing. It really catches your eye. The second thing is that you have to lock it up. So all of the liquidity added to this is locked up. So when someone puts it in there, they're holding it for a year. Okay. They could sell uh, the, the actual yield, but it's, it's a it's a lockup period. And that's the beauty of it is that when it attracts liquidity, it stays within the ecosystem. Also, another thing I want to point out is, as you can see right here, there's a lot of liquidity. Look at that spike provided to Uniswap. So if you're an LP, right, if you're a liquidity provider, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get fees, right? Token on exchanges are up 54%. You're trying to get fees. So you're anticipating that people are going to come and trade this token. Think about what I'm saying here. So the, the smart money, the LP providers are anticipating that people are going to start trading this token. Um, so again, it checks off a lot of boxes. I mean, the, the you know, the marketing is okay. 25.8K followers, I think they can do better. Uh, but I do think the sales proposition is amazing. I do think that the team has credibility. Um, and considering the market cap size, it's checking off a lot of boxes for me. And I think deploying a small amount of capital is not unresponsible. Um, but hey, this is not financial advice. I just wanted to show you guys where my research is leading me. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Catch you guys in the next video.